Hi friends, it's Reverend Laurie coming to you with our Wednesday Love Notes with Unity of Ocala. I'm hoping you all are having a wonderful midweek during this national and global pause. And that's what we're in, this great, amazing pause. And we all kind of seem like um, participants and spectators in this ongoing, slow moving piece of history. I've been a wonderer and a poser all of my life. I thought when I was tiny that it was a game that my grandfather and I played wherever we went. You see, I, I spent a lot of time at my grandparents' house, my sister and I, as my mother was working, trying to pick up the pieces of our life when our father had died. And so I spent a lot of time there. And my little brothers were just babies at the time, and they stayed mostly with my other grandparents. So I got to really be with my grandparents and I didn't care much for the things my grandmother was doing so much, the cooking and cleaning and shopping and going to the hair salon. But my sister loved it. She loved to shop. She loved to get her hair done. I liked to ride around with grandpa and see him get mad at people in the parking lot and roll down his window and call them all kinds of colorful names that I would pick up and my mother would be furious at him. We had so much fun together and we were a foursome. And we would often after lunch go out by the lake and just watch the ducks. And my grandfather would make up these stories about the ducks, about a, a, a couple and their kids and all the naughtiness they were doing. And it was so fun. And we'd go up into the mountains and just watch birds. And he would make up little stories and songs about these critters. And we would wait until the sun went down and the city lights would start coming up all over the mountain. And he would make up stories about the people in their home and what was happening in the evening. And we would go shopping with the girls and grandma and Leslie would go off and get their clothes or their groceries or, and we'd just sit outside of those buildings. And I would just listen to the stories he would tell that he would make up. I didn't realize what a gift he was teaching me. I didn't realize that that game that we played, that sport that we were involved was our private little thing together, was developing an art in me and a type, a way, a perspective to see the world, to see nature, and to be, most importantly, in the present. I learned, thank you, Grandpa, at a very young age, how to be present, how to open your mind how to be taught from other things than teachers pouring things in and knowledge coming in from university and other places. These are great, but to be able to mold your child imagination into this fantastic, fabulous global way is an art. And I continue that tradition with my grandchildren. From the time they are little, I help them understand ways to be present and to let their mind imagine these fabulous things. And way back in the old days, um, January, February, and March, <laughs> when I was actually driving my youngest um, at the time, now she has a little sister, but my granddaughter to pre-K at school, I would go every morning during the week and have breakfast with her while her mommy and her baby sister scooted off to daycare and work. And we would fix breakfast together. And she would say, tell me a story, grandma, tell me a story. And I'd say, what two animals do you want to have a story about? And she would tell me and we would make breakfast. And then on the ride to school, she would notice something. We'd be parked there in line waiting for the drop off and she would notice some squirrels and she would start a story. We would notice the birds on the wire and start a story. And we would laugh and giggle and laugh and giggle. And even now, I don't see her as much because we're restricted. But when I talk to her, when I FaceTime her, the first thing she says is, let's tell a story. And I love that, that, that she is embracing this tradition of my grandfather's and that I taught my children in a way that opens the imagination, but also puts you in the present, 
and allows you a pause and a ponder to wonder and to see what nature's doing, to see how the world is responding. I love to watch the different responses of people, the different types of people and as how they relate to the different types of species in the jungles and the forests and the meadows and the lakelands. And I watch as we all come from a place through times like this, from what we know, we often come from a place of fear, and so we act out in ways perhaps we wouldn't. We come to things as a way to release perhaps suppressed rage we've had in us. So we see a lot going on in our community. And if we take the invitation that we give our children to sit back and pause in this multi tasking, demanding, fast-paced world in which we now live in, I believe that it's important that we pause and take note of what we are going to do from here as we pause and let God help us with the decisions. Where are we going to go from here as we pause? See, there's a big difference in rushing and pacing. Rushing is perhaps a man speeding, running through the airport with a cell phone in his hand. That is rushing. Pacing is walking around the block with a four-year-old and seeing the world through their eyes. Rushing is coming to a finish of all of this that's going on, finding a way to get back to normal. Hmm. But a pace is the ability to rest on the surface and allow the winds and waves of God and nature dictate our next space to settle. And then with what God has given we then build on those gifts we have. There is no need or desire, nor should there be, to go back to what we thought was normal. God and nature are giving us perhaps the grandest invitation of our life to pause, to ponder, to make a new story of who we are going to be collectively together. It's a powerful, powerful time to partner with God, to open your mind to the possibilities of what may lie ahead. Let us involve the children and the brilliant genius to unfold in them, for they are the next generation of this great, beautiful change. Let us rely on each other and the spirit of humanity in each of us. Let us rise with those in the solutions and the movement forward. On Sunday, I'm going to talk about the Fillmores, the co-founders of the Unity Movement, and how they allowed God to manage the times that they were in, and how they were able to rise to such amazing spaces, because they knew in the fallout from the effects of the depression, the financial crisis, the mass suffering of their area, they knew people were going to be hungry and would need the messengers of God in a new way that may not look like a church box. It may look like an open field in which the field animals are present at the surface. What will God imagine? I can't wait to have a story here shortly with my little ones. I can't wait to hear what they're reimagining how they've already recreated their tomorrow. 
And I hope you will take a moment, at least for today, to pause, to look outside of your walls and doors, to pause and ponder the possibilities. So I'm going to leave with this sweet little poem in my beloved little book uh, that just talks about the shows of nature if we but listen, if we but become still, no matter what nature gives. It's called The Song by J. Earl Wyckoff. The day was dark and sullen drops came licking at the pane. Then suddenly, a robin, bold, flung silver music through the rain. A little thing, the robin's song, but shadows fled away, and raindrops strummed the silver tune all through the live long day. May you hear those robin songs through the darkest rains, because my friend, they're there. I love you, we love you, God loves you, and bless you. We'll see you Sunday. Happy hump day, bye-bye.